Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing great. So in this lesson, we are just going to discuss about difference between Terraform and Ansible. Many a time when you are starting your journey towards DevOps, you are going to be a little confused whether you need to learn Terraform or whether you need to learn Ansible and whether these tools are like overlapping tool and you should be good to learn just one tool rather than learning both the tools. So I hope by the end of this video, you will be getting answer of all of those questions. Now, if you see in this table, I have put like 13 points, which is talking about the difference. I could have gone on and put like 20 points or maybe 30 points uh, talking about the difference between Terraform and Ansible. But I think these differences are enough to let you know what is the core difference between Terraform and Ansible. So let's go ahead and understand them. So if you see point number one is basically talking about who manages Terraform. So Terraform is basically developed by HashiCorp and they are the one who manages it. And it was open source earlier. Now it is not open source. It is distributed under BUSL license, which is business source license. But from the end user perspective, it is still an open source. For example, you can just go ahead, use Terraform to deploy resources in your cloud environment, and you are not going to get charged for that. Now on the other side, Ansible is sponsored by Red Hat. They are the one who are managing it. It also has two editions, open source and community edition. So, so typically an organization will be going with enterprise edition and in the enterprise edition there are so many features and stuff like that which is our point number two in point number two basically we are talking about whether the enterprise versions or editions are available for both the tools so yes there is an enterprise edition available for both of these uh, tools or products whatever we call it so you can use terraform cloud to write your terraform config files and also you can manage the state centrally we are going to probably talk about what is this state which i'm talking about in a minute and on the other side, we have Ansible Automation Platform, which is also a paid product, which is going to give you a nice web interface to manage automation in your IT environment. Now let's talk about the core differences between these technically. So if you see point number three, Terraform is used mainly for infrastructure automation and management. Now, if we talk about Ansible, you will see people also calling it that it is used for infrastructure automation as well. But if you see that Ansible is basically used for configuration management and not really an infrastructure automation. Let's understand this through this diagram. So here you can see we have Terraform on the left hand side and then we have Ansible on the right hand side. So with the help of Terraform, typically I will go on and provision my infrastructure. For example, I can go ahead and create API gateway. I can create a VPC, I can create subnets, I can go ahead and launch EC2 instances of different types, I can go ahead and create Lambda function, but I will not be typically using Terraform to, for example, creating users inside EC2 or probably installing some software inside EC2 or maybe let's say uh, configuring that software configuration, maybe changing the default port for that software. So those kind of things are typically not done by Terraform. Those kind of things are typically done by Ansible. So you can see like Terraform is the starting point which you use to set up environment on cloud. And then you use Ansible to perform actions like installing database, creating a DB user, setting up user password, updating maybe config files, deploying web applications, changing maybe web application path or default configuration, or maybe notifying user about the configuration changes, triggering the email notification, so we'll be performing these kind of things using Ansible. And in case of Lambda, let's say once the Lambda is created, an API gateway is integrated with Lambda, then you are probably going to perform various steps like changing some files or configuration within that Python program, which is deployed over Lambda. And that thing you can do with the help of Ansible. Because Ansible provides a lot of facility or functionality, which is related to configuration management or templating. So that's why it is quite useful when you are going to perform config management using Ansible. So point number three is like one of the biggest reason why you need to learn both the tools. Now, of course, whatever I told here, for example, uh, let me go to the diagram again. Here you can see whatever Terraform is doing, most of it can also be done by Ansible. For example, Ansible does have module to create API gateways or VPC or create EC2 instances. But the biggest reason to use Terraform is the state management. And Terraform is actually a declarative language, which we are going to see in next points. So here you can see our point number four, which is talking about Terraform is declarative and Ansible is hybrid. So it, it is like a procedural and declarative. Again, it everything depends on how the modules are written in Ansible. So let's go ahead and understand it here. So here you can see on the left hand side, we have Terraform config file. So in this Terraform config, we are trying to create an EC2 instance. Now, if you see here in this config file, you can see we have given information about provider, which is basically we are saying what is the uh, provider it should use to interact with AWS. 
and then we are also providing AWS key and secret key information which is actually coming from a variable and then we are using modules now these are the two modules which we are using in this example and here you can see EC2 instance is going to get created using this module and then we are having security group module but logically EC2 instance cannot be created first first a security group should be created because that security group is going to be used while creating this EC2 instance so ideally in a procedural language which is like Ansible if you run it it's going to fail because security group should be created first and then you should be able to create EC2 instance but in a declarative language like uh, Terraform, here you can see we are talking about what is the end infrastructure I want to look like and I don't really care about dependency because Terraform is going to take care of the, the dependency automatically. It knows that it needs to create security group first. So it is going to go ahead and create a security group and create the ingress rules and all and then it is going to create an EC2 instance. Now here on the right hand side you can see Ansible code. Now here you can see in Ansible we manage everything typically through roles. We use roles to organize our code. So here you can see we are calling two roles. Our first role is basically going to go ahead and create a security group. And then we are using that security group in launch EC2 instance. And both of these has been specified in a sequence. Now what if I write launch EC2 instance first and then try to create a security group. So of course it is going to fail. Uh, here you can see in the below example we are trying to launch an EC2 instance first. But in that EC2 instance, we might be referring to security group, which is not even available yet. And that's the reason this is going to fail. So that's like biggest difference between a declarative language and a procedural language. Now let's go ahead and talk point number five, which is Terraform configurations are written using HCL, which is HashiCorp code language. And on the other side, Ansible playbooks are written using YAML. So here you can see in this example, uh, whatever you see on the left hand side is something which is HCL code. And on the right hand side, you can see this is YAML uh, syntax and you will typically see YAML being used a lot in Kubernetes. Also, you will see YAML being used a lot. Now, when you are interacting with Terraform, you have to somehow learn syntax and structure of HCL. Now, the other thing, you know, which can be personal, I feel that YAML playbook is quite easier to write when compared to HCL. But again, it is going to depend on the practice. Now I started learning Ansible first. So for me, it, it is quite easier to write Ansible playbooks using YAML. And HCL is quite easy to be honest, but I somehow feel YAML writing YAML playbook is little easier. Point number six, Terraform is best for orchestrating cloud services and setting up cloud infrastructure from scratch. Whereas Ansible is good for configuring applications or software on already provisioned infrastructure services. Now one point I missed out probably here. Let's go ahead on this architecture again. Now here you can see I have shown Terraform interacting with typically all the AWS services, but you can use Terraform to interact with multiple cloud services as well. For example, you can have a couple of EC2 instances running on AWS. Then you can use a Terraform config file to create probably a couple of virtual machines on Azure environment. You'll be able to create multi-cloud config files using Terraform. Now Terraform doesn't support bare metal provisioning, whereas Ansible does support bare metal provisioning. Uh, that's again one of the difference, key difference between Terraform and Ansible. Now one of the interesting difference between Ansible and Terraform is the support for packaging and templating. So if you see Terraform is like quite average in packaging and templating whereas like one of the key strength of Ansible is templating using Jinja templates and packaging. Ansible is like quite good in that. Talking about point number nine, provides lifecycle or state management. Terraform manages state file in TF state file. Now on the other side, Ansible doesn't have a state management, but what is the state management which we are talking about? So in order to understand it, let's go ahead again here. And here you can see, so uh, typically in a Terraform configuration file, I'm going to write configuration for all of these things, which you can see here, for example, creating an API gateway, creating VPC, creating EC2s, etc. Terraform is going to create a TF state file where it is going to keep IDs of all of these components, which has been created. And later on, if you change something here in the config file, it is going to compare our config file with the state file, and then it is going to know what it needs to delete or what it needs to create. Whereas in Ansible, that is not going to happen. For example, uh, if we go here on this example, now here you can see we have Terraform code. And if I run it, it is going to end up creating an EC2 instance. 
and if I run it again, it is not going to create another EC2 instance. Whereas on the other hand side, if you see I run this Ansible playbook, it is going to create an EC2 instance. If I run it again, it is going to end up creating another EC2 instance. So that is like one of the biggest difference as well. Uh, let's go back and talk about our next point. So we already talked about lifecycle management. Let's go ahead and see the other point. So Terraform has providers to automate various infrastructure providers. So I already discussed about this point as well. For example, if you're going to automate infrastructure on AWS, you will need to have, you will need to provide information about AWS provider and that is going to end up downloading the required binaries and then it is going to use those information to interact with uh, cloud providers using the APIs. Whereas in Ansible we have modules so in order to interact with AWS cloud you typically go ahead and install collection which is related to AWS and then you just call those modules in your Ansible code in order to automate things related to AWS. So our next point is talking about how do we organize the codes in Terraform and in Ansible. So in Terraform typically we organize all the codes using modules. For example if you go again here you can see I have created these modules. I have created a module which is called EC2 underscore instance. So basically this is just a folder and here we have also created another module which is responsible for managing security group. Now here on the right hand side you can see we have organized everything using roles and that's why here we are calling different roles. So in Terraform we use modules to organize our code whereas in Ansible we use roles to organize our code. Now in Terraform there is no concept of inventory management. For example you don't need to create a list of inventory where you give details of all the servers and how to connect to those servers because Terraform is the one which is going to create those servers from the scratch. So this inventory information is not going to be available in the first place. Now when you are automating anything with Ansible, you need to provide inventory information as well. For example, you need to provide how to connect to the host, what is the username it needs to use to connect to the host, what is the uh, private key it needs to connect to the host. and you have to provide all those information so, so you have to manage inventory file as well in order to automate anything with Ansible. Now in Terraform we do not have any graphical user interface we need to manage everything using a Terraform CLI and whereas in Ansible even in the open source edition we do have AWX which you can use to manage everything graphically. You are going to still do a lot of work of like writing a playbook using a CLI or by using Visual Studio Code or things like that. But in Terraform, I, I don't really see any support for a graphical user interface. So these are all the major differences which I can say exist between Terraform and Ansible. So both of these tools, they don't really compete with each other. They rather complement each other. For example, if we go back here, you can see I'm using Terraform to provision all the infrastructure and then my last line is triggering Ansible playbook. So basically in Terraform I'm creating everything and then I'm also telling Terraform to trigger the Ansible playbook. Then it is going to trigger the Ansible playbook which is responsible to perform all of these actions which I have mentioned here. So we can use both of these tools to automate everything in our cloud infrastructure or maybe in your DevOps pipeline. So that's all I had in this lesson. See you again in the next lesson.